So today I'm going to take you for a little tour through one of my favorite um, documents. And it's, it's one of my favorites. It's a really nice one for demonstrating all sorts of different things in Unshape. Um, and it looks really cool. Uh, and now it is a bit of a canonical model in the CAD world. Um, this particular one you know, is, you know, this particular design uh, has been around for a long, long time. Uh, this is a Unitas. Uh, ETA 6497 watch movement, so it's a manual manual winding um, watch movement. Very classic, you'll find this goes back many, many, many years and it appears in all sorts of forms. And this particular CAD model can be found on GrabCAD and other sources. Uh, but what we've got here is something that's been fairly heavily reworked. Um, and let me show you uh, some of the some of the things inside here. So, you know, as I said, it's been um, it's been around a long time, and this one in particular, I have taken and, and you know, reworked, especially the assembly side of things, and, and when it comes to mechanisms, and and some of the other layouts. So, you know, that's kind of what I want to uh, uh, start with today. And, you know, the only real way to do something like this is with a top-down design or, or a layout design. So I did indeed start with that. And the, this layout consists of a number of sketches. Um, so I just have the, the, the main diameter. Uh, then I've got a number of circles, which are the pitch circle diameters uh, of the main, um, of the base wheel train. So, you know, in watches, you know, the main thing is that there is a train uh, a going train, it's called, um, where motion of one of these is transmitted uh, from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here, and then this ends up being uh, the minutes, right? So this one turns at a certain rate, and you know all the gear ratios are there. Um, that is the the first part of the wheel train, uh, the going train. Um, then there is a uh, there's a power flow that you know you've got a spring winds up here and it provides spring into this powertrain, uh, into this wheel train. Um, there's another sketch down here which represents the balance, which is the thing that you know you look back and it's the doing the ticking and the tucking, uh, as it were, which stops this wheel here, uh, which was you know, this one here. This one goes at uh, a very sm um, small increments, you know, the tick and the tock and the tick and the tock, um, uh, while this thing goes back and forward. All right, this is a really interesting uh, mechanical design and, and kudos to the uh, centuries of engineering behind it. Uh, finally, the last sketch is the dial, and usually that is designed to have 12 <laughs> evenly spaced markers, right? So, I mean, the, the design of that can be, um, can be whatever you like. And, you know, if once we've got this layout, we can start to use it to design um, other parts of it. So, you know, this is just showing you an, an example here uh, for the beginnings of, you know, I've had a few different tries at this um, and I'll show you, you know, an early form of it. The first thing I did was derive in that those sketches or some of those sketches and then use this, uh, this other um, series of features to carve out the sort of the functional areas of where, you know, the balance, the going train and the power, the spring, uh, reserve spring would be uh, located. So, you know, this type of a top-down design uh, is really nice. Uh, the other thing I did with um, with here was to start using some um, you know test modules <laughs> to see you know how I could make things um, uh, you know lay using the layout again how I could use the custom feature for the uh, drivetrain generator uh, to create a, a going train and you know it's an interesting little experiment in there. Um, but back to the layout, what I did do then is use it to, uh, to work on really the main part of this mechanism, which is what I called before the, the going train. Um, you know, the orange wheels here represent the main thing that ends up at the minute. And you can see here, if I, um, if I do a bit of a cross section, uh, and I said, this is where it really starts to get fascinating. And if you haven't pulled apart a watch, um, or a watch mechanism, it's, you know, if you've got the tools and you've got the patience and the eyesight, it, it's actually uh, well worth trying. It's, it's uh, pretty amazing. 
because all of this stuff is really, really tiny. I, I want to emphasize that. And that's one of the most amazing things. Like if you look at this uh, pinion over here, um, down here, the diameter on this is is absurd, right? 0.15 millimeters. Uh, the diameter on here, I mean, this rides in one of the so-called jewels, like a bearing journal. Uh, this here is the seconds marker. And if I take the section off, that's the second hand. And it is sitting on a, a shaft, which is, uh, whoops, uh, it is um, uh, very, very tiny. Let's measure the diameter of that. It's 0.27 millimeter diameter. So when you put this second hand on to this, you have to press it. It's kind of a little interference fit, a light interference fit. You press it on. You've got to be pretty accurate and obviously you have the right tools. Uh, anyway, so you've got the going train here. Um, this is the, uh, the escape wheel and it just goes around in very small increments like this. And you see the magic is starting to happen here. Um, these wheels are all connected. And what I've done is use on shape uh, mates you know the, most of these are revolutes here on their journals and in order to put the constraints between them I've used a series of probably five um, gear constraints now there are these gears up here the gear relations I obviously have to get the ratios right so that you know one minute turns um, you know through one sweep of the second hand uh, like this will result in one minute being indicated on the minute hand and 60 minutes of this will result in one hour of the um, of the hour hand yeah those ratios are fairly well uh, you know established there's only one right answer for them um, and you can just set them in here so for example you know this first ratio between here and here um, I've got these you know the escape wheel uh, and the second wheel it's called here is uh, you know the ratio is um, 0 0.1 right? and you get all these right uh, you'll soon see if your seconds are moving forward and and time is somehow moving backwards on minutes that's you've obviously got to collect the box there to to reverse them anyway so this is this is really the heart of it and what I've done is I've used if you can see here I've used the layouts by inserting those sketches into this assembly here I use the position of the centers in order to effectively place and constrain where these uh, other wheels are going to go um, I don't want to mess around in this assembly here with trying to place things and move things around I'm actually going to just have done that all at the layout level here uh, and any changes I need to make at the layout level will flow down through the rest of the the model into um, this wheel train so this was really important to me to you know as i said this was an established cad document or cad file at least when i i started with it i started with a step file and sort of pulled it to pieces uh, i rem remodeled a lot of things um created a few extra new things and but the big one is that i fully pulled it to pieces put it back together in a proper assembly in on shape using proper mates um, I did use a, a more uh, sensible, you know, sub-assembly kind of approach to it so that the functional areas, um, you know, like this is the keyless works. Uh, this is a really, really interesting part of a watch. There's many interesting parts of a watch, but this is a particularly interesting thing. Uh, it's called keyless because it um, takes away the necessity from the old days when you used a key to wind up the spring in your watch or clock. Uh, this was a technological leap forward here so that you could create a setting and winding mechanism all in one, uh, which didn't require any keys. Um, another sub-assembly worth looking at here, and I just cut a section here. This is where the, um, this is where the spring is, uh, the main spring, um, which holds all the power, right? it holds all the energy, and it releases it. Uh, this is a clicker, like a ratchet mechanism, just to make sure that you can, when you wind it up, it doesn't unwind itself spontaneously. Um, that is that there. I'll get rid of that. Um, this is another plate uh, that obviously you can see how it's how you know it's got some aesthetic, <laughs> a lot of aesthetic 
design to it, but it's very functional in that it's going to house and make the bearing locations very, very, very accurately for, uh, in, in this case, the, um, the power. Uh, you know, this is the, uh, you know, the spring that sits under here, and then, you know, there's this thing to stop it from uh, unwinding that clicker that you saw before. A few more sub-assemblies like that, and then it all comes together in this one here. Now, I created this dial. It's sort of a typical style, you know, big aviator, kind of pretty wide diameter. Um, and I've actually got a different part studio for this. And a lot of this stuff, as normal for my for my modeling, is, is very heavily uh, relying on variables um, to make this thing easily changeable and, and configurable in future. Um, for example, here this dial here is, is using all these variables, which are like the overall diameter, um, you know, which varies between for this particular watch and case that you put it into, you know, 36 to 37 millimeters. Uh, its thickness, again, these, you know, these numbers are pretty small compared to things if you, you know, used to building bridges or cars or trains. Uh, you know, 0.43 is a, is a pretty small diameter uh, thickness through here. And then what I've done is put a lot of uh, variables for, you know, the markings diameter. That's that's this diameter here you know, for where I want these markings. And, you yeah, know, obviously using patterns and, uh, and things. And one of the new fonts, actually, I like this font. Um, this is, <laughs> I have a sketch in here to do all of the markings. Where is that? Uh, here it is. I'm using a font which we added probably five or six releases ago um, called um, Microma. Uh, there's a number of new fonts if you haven't explored. Um, these are from the uh, open Google, uh, Google fonts, the free ones. Anyway, that's a nice looking font. Seemed to be appropriate for this uh, modern take on a pilot watch. Something like this. Though that dial is consumed into the um, into this top level assembly here so uh, you know the the uh, let's show this off a little bit <laughs> right I'm using named positions quite a lot and I'm sorry I've just moved on to this browser because so it's um, giving me a bit of a hard time with uh, uh, with some of these widths all right uh, one of the you know things with a named position is that you can remember the position of certain mates in the um, in an assembly. Let's make that square on like that, and take off the perspective so that we can see that everything is squared up. So you know, twelve o'clock zero 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 uh, is is you know maybe an obvious thing to to use as the home position, uh, but in fact. In the watch and clock industry, uh, ten past ten is often a uh, is often what you'll see if you have a look in the catalog. You'll always see that ten past ten, or variations, slight variations in that ten oh nine thirty is is another one um, that people have used because uh, it, you know, the theory goes that it sort of looks a little bit like a smile, so it's a happy time um, through here. Uh, it's very symmetric. You know, it gives you nice symmetry, and then often watchmakers have a logo in the middle here, and it's not obscuring this 12, which sometimes is the most aesthetically, um, you know, ornate kind of time. There might be a particular marker up there. So yeah, let's leave it at 10:09:30. Um, but as you saw before, you know, we could just wind this forward or back. Uh, and if you ever need to go back to that particular time, you just go to your named position and say apply named position and it takes us all the way back to there. Um, something that's nice to look at here is the an animation. So I'm going to, I've you know, left myself a little note here to animate maybe, I don't know, we'll just pick a, a fairly large number of degrees to go through. Um, I don't know. And I'm going to animate this wheel in the middle here, which is called uh, um, uh, you know, the third wheel. And if we do that for, say, 900 steps and do it on a loop, let's do have a look what's going to go there. So it calculates the frames 
and we're you know fairly rapidly animating the second hand here um, whilst the hour and the minute go with it and we flip it over and have a look on the back side it's fairly compelling <laughs> to see um, what's going on in there you can see you know some things move pretty slowly um, but you know that's the uh, that's the nature of this um, some things are moving really fast so that you know you're getting a little bit of a an aliasing effect in there as well so you know I didn't do anything special um, once I had the wheel train sorted out uh, that was the you know this this mechanism here in this subassembly once I had this sorted out then everything else was really just a static build up around here um, you know and um, you know that's the that was the key that was the key to this um, so uh, you know the few well you know one of the keys was was having that the other key was to use named positions so that I could always come back to them uh, and, and flip between them so that things could stay in a, uh, in a in a nice position now you know the other really interesting and, and useful thing for a name position is in a drawing um, you can have a um, Uh, a name position as one of the um, uh, any one of the options for whether you want to set this up but so there we go there's 10 10 on the drawing there now so name positions use them for your own mechanism design but also you can use them for for drawings later on now this is probably where we can leave it for now there's a lot more things you can experiment with on this uh, on this model it's a great one it's it's a beautiful mechanical design um, it's it's a canonical thing you know you'll probably see it show up in a lot of different CAD demos and and that's sort of sorry but not sorry I'm going to show it to you uh, <laughs> again and again uh, but uh, hopefully you have seen something interesting here <laughs>